I didn't see this happen live. Brady pointed it out on our little uh, text chain, which is always professional. Brady pointed this out on the text chain. Oh, no. Um, this sounds like a lie. No, no, no. Let's see what he actually says. Is this, is this, no, no, this no, is no, a real no, one. No, this, this is a real one. one. This is okay. real. The Chase Young roughing the passer oh call God. against Matt Ryan is one of the most egregious embarrassments uh, uh, from, from an NFL penalty standpoint <laughs> and from a quarterback standpoint. <laughs> it wiped I've out what could be described as Matt Ryan's oh, worst oh play of his entire career. <laughs> it literally wiped out what could have been the worst play of his entire career as he was trying to escape and scramble Awkwardly goes like he wanted. And I have no idea why he just didn't throw the football away. And then as he's kind of going to throw like double clutches and Chase Young's like forearm grazes him, I guess, to the to the face mask or the head and neck areas. They would describe it completely, completely incidental. And Matt Ryan, as he's starting to fall back, I think he went to one knee at one point, then like popped up and just threw it downfield. There is no Falcon in the vicinity. <laughs> it gets picked off, and it's negated by the, literally the worst call of this past Sunday, which is shocking. <laughs> he got on a knee. like He took a knee to throw the football afterwards. It was I, I, it was so bad. Like understand. he's played for so long, he's been a former MVP, and I'm like, what are you doing? What's it might doing? be one of the most bizarre looking plays. <laughs> it certainly it, it may rank as the worst for him in his career, but it definitely ranks up there as one of the most bizarre looking plays in the history of the game. Okay, I mean, Chase Young seems like he gets called for a lot of roughing the passers, and I don't know if they're targeting him, but is he is is he so dominant? That things look like a penalty. Well, that looked like a penalty. I mean, he made contact with his head, but here's, uh, but here's I don't, a, I don't know if he here's did. Here's the problem. I, I don't, I don't even know if he did. It I'm so saying, did it look like it? It could look, but here's, here's where I have a problem. If you glance his head while he still has the ball, so what? Exactly. Right. That, that he's out of the a, pocket too. He's, not even he's in out the of pocket. the pocket. It's not. You, he's not a defenseless runner. He is. He it has the ball. So it's not like he glanced his head and the ball was released. He still had the ball, and you got to keep that in mind. You can hit a running back, and you can hit that running back. We saw in college. Somebody in college football got their head, their helmet grabbed from behind. And they almost ripped his helmet off. <laughs> and there was no flag thrown because he had the back of his helmet, not the front of it. That was the technicality of, of the non-penalty call. Here's what I blame, though. All right. I blame the NFL and their rules for this. Because in the old days, when you see like a pocket passer like Matt Ryan leave the pocket, if it ain't there, he's just throwing it away. We've literally – put bubble wrap around every quarterback in the NFL to the point now where you get even guys like him. He's extending a play. He has no business extending and then getting bailed out by a call, which was as questionable as it comes in, in that game, which if I'm not mistaken, that drive too led to points, which helped them at least take the lead. Now, ultimately Washington ended up winning the game. So no one's going to draw attention to it. That's how the NFL works. But, but because of the way the rules and the emphasis of these rules are, we're now allowing guys to be like, yeah, I've, I have no fear of rolling outside the pocket because they're going to make a call that's going to be in my favor more often than not. Can I, can I just add to this, this, this conversation by saying if these rules weren't so egregious at times as to how they call these, these games and with, with quarterbacks, he might have blew Matt Ryan up. He might have blown him up, and it might have not even been – it just would have been a sack. But because right. of all of the, these penalties and all of these – you just don't know when you can hit a guy, how you can hit them. You get these moments where you see guys like that. That looked awkward for Chase Young. And you know yeah. why? Because he's pumping the ball. He's pumping that ball. Like he's, he's – he's, you know, he's, he's doing the whole thing with the ball. And – you don't know in the moment. You don't know if he's let that ball go or if he's not let that ball go. So now he's running in front of him. He he brushed him off. He 
brushed Chase Young off. It's not like he obliterated him, and it's like, oh, throw that flag. Where's the flag? It's like, awful, He man. brushed him and, off. And and to, to Brady's point, and this, is, this I think also happens, they'll get bailed out because uh, Washington still won the game. So bad call, they'll get bailed out because Washington still won the game. This happens in, in boxing or in MMA all the time to where there's three judges scoring a fight. Right. And, and I'm, I'm serious about that. There's three judges scoring a fight. One of the judges' scorecards will be so egregiously bad that you think to yourself, "Is this guy trying to fix a fight?" But because the, the take, the, yeah. uh, because the other two scored it correctly, the right guy still won the fight. So the third one gets forgotten about him, and we just go, oh, "Whatever." Well, at least they got the decision right. No, no, no. It was a terrible. It, it's it's a terrible call. This, these are terrible penalties that are being called around the NFL. Khalil Mack got called for one yesterday. It was awful. Like this is happening all around the league. But as long as the result, it doesn't impact the final result. They're not going to do anything about it. Just just like the NFC title game, that PI that they blew of Rams and Saints. The, yeah. it, like, because that was seen and it impacted the actual final of a game, then they said, okay, well, we got to make some changes here. Until it actually impacts the final play of a game that matters, they're not going to do anything about this. Just the way the league's going to call it. It's terrible. I just hate the inconsistencies. It's it's one thing if, okay, if you're going to wrap up every quarterback in bubble wrap and how you're going to make defenders adjust to the game, okay, just just be consistent with it. Because game to game, week to week, it's that, it's, it's pass interference, it's everything else, and they are all under one umbrella, but it just seems like week in and week out, you get different results, and you can't tell me that, you know, teams are that drastically different in the techniques that they're going to be using you know, with, with every single because because there's certain crews where you see the inconsistencies with. I mean, Vinovich last night, he's not, he was not an official that's known for throwing a bunch of flags. There was what 15 penalties last night. A lot. That's a lot in an NFL game, and so I don't I don't really understand if it's the directive that they're getting from the NFL, and and it's still early in the season. So you know how they are. They like to you know hammer home these points of emphasis and make sure they highlight certain rules early in the season before we get into the, to the midway or that playoff run where then they start letting teams play and they, and they stop giving you know some of these players the benefit of the doubt you know with whatever this DPI or roughing the passer whatever you want to throw in that category. 